Good morning. I am Jen Ryan, and I serve as youth pastor here at River Life Church. And I just wanted to take a few moments today and share my testimony with you. It wasn't until I was in my 30s that I realized that I really do have a testimony to share. Um, I thought because I lived in a sheltered home and I had a stable home life with both parents and a younger brother that, you know, it wasn't worth really telling anybody. Nobody would want to hear it. But God got a hold of me through some of his amazing children at our church and reminded me that that is my story. So I just want to remind you, if you have a story similar that you feel like you don't need to share because it's not what you consider impactful, remember others need to hear what you have to say. And you have had God moments through your lifetime. I was so. saved at the early age of six years old. My grandfather was a preacher and he would go around preaching revivals back when we used to have those all the time. So um, my grandmother and he and my mom sang in a gospel group. So I've always been around church and, and, and singing and God my entire life. But when I was six years old, I felt God calling and pulling and tugging on my heart. And that was when we made the decision to follow him and not turn back. So he's always been at the center point of my life. Um, when I was around 19 years old, I felt God calling me to ministry. But at that time, um, I didn't know what that meant. I knew I wanted to work with teenagers and I knew I wanted to um, help out in some way. But in my mind, women weren't pastors and women really didn't preach a whole lot. And I really wasn't exactly sure what that was. Um, I didn't know how to help and I didn't know where it would take me. So I thought, well, I'll become a teacher. I was gonna go to college and I went for a few years, but I never finished. Things happened, life got in the way, um, you know, trying to fi find myself in college. And um, I just mainly, I took a break from school and I went to work for my uncle. I didn't date a lot in high school. Um, it was very few people that were even, you know, guys that were even interested in me. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of experience with it, but here I was at, um, you know, 22, working for my uncle, watching all my friends get married, because, you know, that's what you do when you get 20 years old, um, right? And I just, I felt, you know, I was like, God, what's wrong with me? And I, I remember specifically praying for God to bring a person, you know, the man that I was to marry um, to me, <clears throat> in my life, excuse me, that I had a detailed list of the things that I would like for him to do this and this and this and this and this, and he did all of those things and more. Um, but I was on a ministry trip when I was probably 20, 21. It was before I met my husband. Um, I was on a ministry trip and one of the young ladies that we were there at their church visiting, we were riding down the road going back to the church and she said, are you not married? And I said, no, not even anybody in the picture. And she looked at me and she said, it's coming and when it does, it's going to be quick. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. So, you know, you don't want to be rude, but when people tell you that, you're kind of like, mm, we'll see. Um, I met my husband in September of 2002 and November 2003 we were married. So we were engaged within six months of us meeting each other and we got married within a year and a month of, or a year and two months of meeting for the first time. So it was quick, but we've been together for 18 years and married 17. And I learned also in this whole time not to tell God that you're not going to do something because I distinctly remember coming home from a shopping trip with my mom one week and I said, you know what? I really don't like Georgia. I'm not going to, I will never, I will never live in Georgia. I will never live in Florida. And I think God heard me and he laughed because my husband lived in Georgia and worked in Atlanta when we first met each other. So I spent five my life living in Georgia. And I've spent the last 12 years of my life living in Florida. All of those shifts and moves have pushed me into what I'm, God called me to do in the first place. Throughout all this time of being married to my husband, who is an amazing man and he's, he's great, um, 
and being becoming a mom, um, I felt like I had missed, completely missed, what God had called me to do. And there was a long period of time there that I felt like I completely failed God and that, yes, He called me at one time, but there's no way He would still want me to do this. There's no way that God would want me to step out and, and take on um, helping teenagers you know, or being a youth pastor because I did not want to put pastor to my name because in my mind I was like, that's a whole nother level of responsibility and I don't want to be wrong about that. I've done these different things, but I never felt like I was completely fulfilling what God was calling me to do. Yes, I was helping with these aspects, but that wasn't where God had called me to. And um, probably about four years ago, maybe five, um, sitting here at River, River Life Church, um, I was listening to one of Pastor Tom's sermons and God just quickened me. He was like, it's time. You need to do this. I have called you to do this. This is not something that you have, you know, he forgot. Um, so I remember sitting in service that day just bawling and going, oh, okay, I don't know what this means. I had several meetings with Pastor Tom, talking to him, and, you know, one thing led to another, and I ended up work volunteering and helping out with the youth ministry, but I wasn't like a leader. I was just kind of on the sidelines, um, and I just knew, and the more I helped out, the more I knew I haven't missed it that this was my opportunity to do what God, God had put on my heart, you know, 20 plus years ago. And to me, that was huge because so many of us walk through our life thinking I missed it or God can't use me or why would I, why would anybody care what I have to say or what I, I think or, you know, what God's done for me because I've missed my opportunity. And if you are still breathing, if you're still taking in a breath, you still have a job to do and an opportunity to do the things that God um, has for you. And you haven't missed it yet. And that was something huge for me. I, I remember, you know, okay, God, this is, this is crazy. And I, I think you probably bumped your head, but okay, um, let's do this. And I have seen in the last five years, I have seen God order things and put things together and put things in place that I never imagined would be in place. I, I wasn't really sure um, how Bob was going to take all of that because, you know, he was raised in a different background for me. So, I, you know, for me to go from his wife to a youth leader, a youth pastor, how would that affect it? You know, um, and really it has brought us closer together. It has strengthened our marriage. God has done things between the two of us that have drawn us closer to each other, to lean into each other that I know that God has, um, strengthened us as a family through all of this. Um, and I'm just very, very thankful for that. I am thankful that you know, God ordered all of this and I can look back at my life and see the things that I have struggled with and see the things that I thought I missed it. I just wasn't ready for, you know, thinking I had missed the calling that he put on my life, but I see where they were steps preparing me for where I am right now. I just give God the glory. I give him the praise because without him, I wouldn't be here. Um, you know, there that's the only thing I know to say is without God, I wouldn't be where I am today. I have seen him move in my family. I have seen him um, move in me, fix, work on things. You know, I kind of mess it up, but work on things um, that I always thought were bad things about me, like my, my detail-oriented planning. I remember having a complete meltdown um, on the way to church one day, it was it was when I we lived in Ocala and I was working in a different church. And I've always been one that's a planner. If you know me, 
you know that I plan to the detail. I need all of the details and I need all of the ideas and all of the um, intricate what ifs handled before anything happens so that I have a plan in place. Um, and I remember one day driving to church and I was having a worship time and I was praying and then I was like upset. And I remember specifically saying, God, why, why did you make me the way that I am? Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, why is it necessary that I feel that way? And it, the Holy Spirit quickened me. It was like, because you need that. We need those kind of people in the kingdom. Because there's those of us that are planners and those of us that fly by the seat of our pants. And I am not one of those. Things in my life that I don't understand. Um, but I know that he does. And I just, you know, I thank him for that. So I just want to say thanks for listening, for hanging out with me this morning. Um, and encourage you that... No matter where you are in your life, whether you feel like you've missed the call or you're not really sure what God's got for you, I want to encourage you that you're still breathing, you're still watching this, you still have a purpose, you still have a plan. God still has huge, huge things for you. Um, and all He wants from you is for you to say, okay, God, here I am. Use me. So I thank you for spending time with me, and I hope you have an amazing day.